So your social studies teacher will probably ask you to write quite often about causes and effects. And you may write extended responses or possibly even full essays about the principles of cause and effect, looking at how a given event in history may have led to certain effects, or look at the different causes that led to that given event in history. Since you'll be doing this quite often, let's take a look at how you can effectively write a cause and effect piece of writing. Let's take a sample prompt. Discuss the causes and effects of Spanish exploration into the New World. It's fairly simple and the answers are probably right there in your textbook or even online. All you need to do is some reading and you can gather some facts and data. Your social studies teacher may even take you through a graphic organizer listing causes and effects in different columns or different spaces on a paper. Let's assume all of that has happened. You have the information and you've written your paragraph. Here's a sample student answer to this prompt. There are many causes and effects of the Spanish exploration. One is that these diseases spread throughout the land and aboard the ship when they began their journey, such as smallpox, influenza, measles, and typhus. A second cause and effect is that the people that had already settled down on the land disliked the Spanish visiting for trade. Some settlers thought that they were invaders. Also, some of the crew members did not complete their task, so the captain let them rot inside the cellar or threw them overboard. This is an actual student response to the prompt that I just listed about the causes and effects of Spanish exploration. And even though it may seem to have a number of problems, I prefer to look at some of the strengths of this answer. Each sentence very clearly presents some evidence that relates to the prompt, and it relates to causes and effects of Spanish exploration. Actually, if we're honest, it only addresses the effects of Spanish exploration, well, but we'll get into that later. The fact is, there's a lot of competent material here that we can revise and deal with. I can take this paragraph and make it an exceptional paragraph about the effects of Spanish exploration. Let's see how. First, we have to talk about the claim. The claim may be considered the topic sentence. Um, it is the controlling idea of the answer. In a larger piece of writing, it will be called the thesis. Currently, the student has written, there are many causes and effects of the Spanish exploration. The problem with this claim, it is vague. Vague means unclear, open to interpretation. Information is missing. This topic sentence, this claim, doesn't really tell me anything about what the student will write, and a claim must. Ask yourself, how can you generalize about the causes? I know many different causes exist, but how can you generalize? What do they all have in common? Or consider, how can you generalize about the effects? What do all the effects seem to have in common? Sure, this may actually lead to a two-part answer with causes and effects, possibly two claims, possibly two paragraphs. However, it's vitally important that you generalize about the causes and effects, basically that you add content. You cannot simply rewrite the prompt vaguely into a topic sentence claim. You must add content. How would we do that? Well, let's revise this claim. There are many causes and effects of the Spanish exploration. How do we revise this? First of all, we find a strong subject. Right now, this sentence uses the word there as a subject, and that word is vague. It doesn't help me understand exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about the Spanish exploration, so that could be a good subject. And then we have to add content. So if we're talking about causes and effects, and actually this paragraph talks about effects, Think about some very basic content. Were those effects positive, negative, a mix of the two, harmful, beneficial? Think about what you are about to write in the paragraph. Use that to add the content to your sentence. The Spanish exploration harmed both the Spanish and Native Americans. My strong subject is present, the Spanish exploration. Remember, lead the sentence with a grammatical subject that is strong harmed is the content. I'm talking about negative effects throughout my paragraph, so harmed is an appropriate verb. And who did it harm? Well, according to those sentences that the student wrote, it harmed both the Spanish and the Native Americans. Now I've written a claim that is clear. It's no longer vague. It tells me exactly what will follow in the paragraph, supporting evidence for this idea of Spanish exploration harming these populations of people. Let's continue throughout the paragraph. 
this first sentence after the claim demonstrates a very simple principle. You want to use transition words, but not as subjects. Now, when we talk about a subject, we're talking about not the topic of the sentence or the topic of the paragraph, but the grammatical subject. With this sentence, the grammatical subject is one. One is not clear at all. One indicates that we're talking about the first effect or the first cause, which means that should be a transition word. But right now, it's the subject of the sentence. So get in the habit of using transition words and phrases, but don't use them as subjects. You can try sam simple transition words and phrases like first, next, or finally, and you want to follow those with commas. If you do that, first, comma, then your next word will probably be a strong subject, and your sentence will be much stronger and clearer. And then you can use important subjects, in this case, like Columbus or the Spanish. You want to talk about people, groups, or important events as your subjects. The word one is not a clear subject in the slightest bit. You want words like Columbus. You want terms like age of exploration. These are important nouns and noun phrases that can be the subjects, the grammatical subjects of your sentences. And also think about this. When you're talking about cause and effect, you want to use cause and effect words. For causes, you can use words like because or so or phrases like for this reason. For effects, you should use phrases like as a result or verbs like alter, affect, changed, harmed, or destroyed. Use strong language to indicate your ideas. These words of transition, verbs, uh, phrases can indicate causes and effects. And as you start to use them more and more often, you'll become habitually used to them. And in that way, you'll use them without even thinking about it. If you'd like a complete list of these sorts of phrases and words and verbs, you can look online or ask your English teacher. He or she can probably provide some excellent resources that will give you lists of these sorts of transitions for cause and effect writing. Let's revise this sentence. Remember, the sentence states, one is that these diseases spread throughout the land and aboard the ship when they began their journey, such as smallpox, influenza, measles, and typhus. This sentence, with our transformation, becomes, first, the Spanish brought diseases to both the ships and the land. These diseases included smallpox, influenza, measles, and typhus. I've used a transition word of first, which leads me to a strong subject, the Spanish, as a group. And then I indicate a very strong effect, brought diseases. So the Spanish brought diseases. That core statement is clear. It's a clear effect statement, and it uses a transition word first to indicate a sequence in the paragraph, rather than using the word one as a subject. Let's continue. We can practice the same revision strategy on the next sentence. A second cause and effect is that the people that had already settled down on the land disliked the Spanish visiting for trade. Some settlers thought they were invaders. This sentence becomes, second, the Native Americans reacted with fear toward the Spanish. They disliked the Spanish traders, thinking they were invaders. Once again, transition word and strong subject. Second, the Native Americans reacted with fear, very strong effect. My core sentence, second, the Native Americans reacted with fear, is a very strong effect sentence. And the transition word second indicates its sequence in the paragraph. Once again, my cause and effect writing is clear. The rest of the language in my revision indicates some of the details of evidence that you may have pulled from a textbook or an online resource. We can continue. Also, some of the crew members did not complete their task, so the captain let them rot inside the cellar or threw them overboard. It becomes, finally, the Spanish captains killed the crew members that did not complete their tasks by throwing them overboard or letting them rot inside cellars. Finally, the Spanish captains, my transition word and strong subject, killed crew members. A strong effect. Notice that all three of these effects in the last th sentences indicate the harm that's part of my claim sentence. And that means my topic sentence, my claim sentence, is strongly linked in content to my developing sentences. The writing is intact. Here's the revised paragraph. 
The Spanish exploration harmed both the Spanish and the Native Americans. First, the Spanish brought diseases to both the ships and the land. These diseases included smallpox, influenza, measles, and typhus. Second, the Native Americans reacted with fear toward the Spanish. They disliked the Spanish traders, thinking they were invaders. Finally, the Spanish captains killed crew members that did not complete their tasks by throwing them overboard or letting them rot inside cellars. This paragraph takes the original content, which was fairly decent, of the paragraph and transforming it into an exceptionally clear and well-organized paragraph that focuses on effects, and the writing brings that out. Let's review some of the skills presented in this video. First, in the claim sentence, you must identify a clear subject. Remember that we identified Spanish exploration as the clear subject of our claim sentence instead of the word there. Second, you want to make sure to add content to the claim. The content that we added was the harm of the effect, rather than just saying something like many causes and effects, which is vague and unhelpful. Third, we use transition words and phrases, but not as subjects. First, second, and finally were our transition words and phrases in the revised paragraph. Fourth, we used important people, groups, and ideas as subjects. Spanish, Spanish captains, these are the words that formed the subjects, the most important nouns of our sentences, thus focusing the writing on the important ideas. And finally, we used key words for cause and effect, especially in the verb position. Verbs like harmed, killed, reacted with fear, um, and the transition words helped us understand that we're talking about effects and specifically negative effects within this paragraph. If you follow these five pieces of advice, then you can revise a paragraph that you've written into a very clear cause and effect structure.